Hey, what's going on guys? As promised, we're finally going to get into Laravel. So I don't think I've ever had as many requests for a single video as I've had for this one. And I do have some good news for you, which is that this is going to be a series. Initially, I wanted it to be a crash course, but I, I quickly came to find out that uh, to include all the parts of Laravel that I wanted to cover, it, it's not going to fit into an hour or even an hour and a half. And that's longer than I, I normally like the crash courses to go. Uh, plus, I know a lot of you guys prefer the modular series format over the crash courses. Um, so we're not just going to be covering the fundamentals of Laravel, but we'll also be building a project start to finish. So in this video, we're going to take a look at what we'll be building. And we're also going to talk a little bit about Laravel and some, some of the things that it can do. So let's go ahead and get started. This video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. If you're interested in learning web development, iOS, or UX design, Dev Mountain is a 12-week design and development boot camp intended to get you a full-time job in the industry. To learn more, visit devmountain.com or click the link in the description below. All right, so before I get into what we'll be doing, let's just let's talk a little bit about what Laravel is. So Laravel is an open source PHP framework. And the creators of Laravel have said many times that they aim to make the development process pleasing without sacrificing any quality. So Laravel is very elegant and things just kind of seem to, to work together very nicely. Not only is Laravel popular, but it's also respected, uh, which is funny because there's a lot of programmers that look down on PHP. And I've even had subscribers straight up tell me they hate PHP and it sucks. And then later on, uh, ask me when I'm going to do the Laravel course. So it's almost like they don't know or, or, or don't care that it is PHP. And I think the reason behind that is because Laravel really goes against that unorganized spaghetti code stigma that PHP has. All right, uh, Laravel uses the MVC or Model View Controller design pattern. We'll be talking about that throughout the series. But basically, the model deals with the database. The view is the user interface that displays in the browser. And the controller handles requests, which come from uh, either URLs or forms get requests, post requests, deletes, and so on. And we'll be covering this stuff extensively throughout the series. All right, so I've come to learn that most of you don't like the ongoing series where I release a video once every week or two. And honestly, that method has kind of been a pain in the ass for me as well. So we're going to do this all in one shot. I'm going to finish the series, and then I'll upload one video after another. And it may, it may span over a couple days, but we're going to get through this series before I start something else. So before we look at the project, I just want to go over what uh, what the series includes. So I'm going to briefly go over the fundamentals in, in some slides and just give you a better understanding uh, of what Laravel can do before we get started. And then in the next video, we'll install Composer, uh, which is a PHP dependency manager, and we'll install Laravel with that. Then we'll start on our application, which will basically be a, a website with a blog system. Now I outline this application in a certain way and that's so that we can touch on all the main points that we need to uh, and still create something from it. So it'll be a full CRUD application, create, read, update, and delete. We'll create routes, controllers, models. We'll deal with database migrations and all of that. All right, then we'll implement authentication so that users can register and log in. Uh, we'll add access control. We'll, we'll add all of the foundation that goes into building a, uh, an application. All right, we're even going to implement file uploading and uh, things like pagination. So I'm, I'm going to even try to deploy the app somewhere. PHP is usually easier to deploy than something like Node.js or Rails. Uh, so, so that shouldn't be too bad. All right, so like I said, uh, this course will cover, or this series will cover all the fundamentals of Laravel and get you started. But if you're still hungry for more after that, I would highly, highly recommend getting the 10 project course that I just created for Eduonics. Uh, what we talk about in this YouTube series covers about the first three projects or so, at least the same type of material. Um, but in the course, we'll go on to create seven more projects, and uh, I try to make each one different. So for instance, we'll, we'll deal with file uploading and storage with the photo gallery. We'll build, build a REST API uh, with a front end. We'll use the October CMS in one project, which is a, a production Laravel app. Uh, we'll work with the Twitter API. We'll use Vue.js in the contact manager. We'll use Postgres in the, in the bookmark manager. So I try to make every project different so it's not the same thing one after another. 
And if you do go on and you do purchase the course, please use the affiliate link in the description or go through Traversy Media. Uh, I get a, a fixed price for these courses and then the only way that I profit after that is, is by affiliate links. So I would highly appreciate that from you guys. All right, and I'm going to be creating my own Udemy courses soon. All right, so now that we get that out of the way, let's talk about what Laravel actually does for us. All right, so why would we choose to build an application with Laravel over just building it straight up from scratch? Um, there's actually too many reasons to list, so I, I listed the important ones. So Laravel handles routes in an extremely simple way. You can simply define what URL and what type of requests that you want to handle. Um, now, most MVC PHP frameworks do this as well, such as, you know, such as CodeIgniter or CakePHP. But some of them, some of the routing files are really difficult uh, when dealing with expressions and dynamic URLs and things like that. Laravel makes everything very, very simple, which makes it a, a great candidate for RESTful APIs. Laravel also adds a security layer to your app, so it automatically escapes what it needs to. It implements cross-site protection with forms and submitting to the database, among other things. Working with the database is also incredibly easy. Laravel is shipped with uh, uh, an awesome command line tool called Artisan, and it lets us do pretty incredible things with just single commands. So one of those things is to create database migrations. Um, now, if you've ever worked with Ruby on Rails or some of the other frameworks, uh, some, Pyth some of the Python frameworks, then you know how helpful migrations are. They let us do things like create and edit tables and columns and set constraints in the database and much more. Now, with something like CodeIgniter, uh, we have to go in and manually do this stuff either with the console and SQL commands or uh, something like PHP MyAdmin. All right, Laravel also uses the Blade template engine to display views. Uh, we can extend layouts. We can use control structures like loops and conditionals right in the HTML. All right, so there's also uh, there's many different ways to implement authentication, but Laravel sets that up for us. So it automatically creates migrations to create the user table, and all we have to do is run a simple artisan command to enable everything, okay, to enable authentication. Laravel can handle sessions. Um, the latest version, which is 5.4, that's the version we'll be using. It uses Laravel Mix to compile assets. Uh, if I believe 5.3 used Elixir. Uh, we can easily use SAS, which is a, a CSS precompiler that lets us use things like variables and mix-ins in our CSS. All right, so there's also a core storage library to uh, to do all types of things with files, to upload files and manage them, um, transfer them, and so on. Error handling uh, is pretty easy to do, messaging, things like that, unit testing, although we won't be getting into that. Laravel does ship with the ability to run tests. All right, email configuration for SMTP if you wanted to have like verification emails sent from your app, things like that and Laravel also handles cache pretty well. So these are just some of the things that uh, some of the benefits to using this framework. So as far as the environment goes, our development environment, I'm going to be using Windows and we're going to use XAMPP which gives us an Apache server, PHP and MySQL on our local machine. Everything we need to, to run Laravel. It's completely cross-platform uh, if you have a, a Mac or you're using Linux, you can use XAMPP or you can use something like WAMP or, or MAMP. Um, MAMP, I believe, is only for Mac. Uh, or you could just use a native LAMP stack if you're using uh, something like Ubuntu, uh, which is probably a better option if you're using Linux. But installing Laravel is also pretty easy. We're, we're going to use Composer, which is a dependency manager. Um, this is kind of like NPM if you're a Node.js developer. We're going to install that and then we're going to run this simple command to create a new Laravel project. All right, now once we do, we install Laravel, everything that's viewed in the browser is going to be put into the public folder. And what we want to do is set up a virtual host with Apache to point to that folder because we don't want to have to go in and actually go to slash public. Uh, it's also a huge security concern. So you definitely want to um, create a virtual host and I'll show you exactly how to do that. All right, so I mentioned that uh, Laravel has, uh, it comes with Artisan, which is a, a command line interface, and it's incredibly helpful and easy to use. Um, 
some of the things that it can do I have listed here but there's a lot more it can create controllers and models so we don't have to go and actually uh, create the files manually and add the class and so on it can create the database migration files and run those migration files it can create uh, providers events jobs form requests etc it can show us the available routes in our application it can uh, we can create session commands we can run tinker which is uh, a nice little shell program to interact with the database so if we want to quickly insert something or, or select some rows or something like that tinker is a really nice tool for that uh, you can also create your own custom commands okay so these are just some of the things you can do so here's some examples of artisan commands so what you would do is php artisan and then the command so list will actually show you all of the available commands that you have um, help if you want to do help and then a command it'll tell give you some information on that specific command um, make is a really helpful command that we can we can make different things such as a controller so in this case we create a to do's controller we can create models with make model um, now models should be singular and controllers should be plural all right now this dash M right here what this is doing is it's telling it that we want to also create a migration for this model because we want to add some field add, add a, um, a table to the database okay and if you wanted to create a migration separately you could say make migration and give it some kind of uh, descriptive name in this case add to do's to DB okay so there's no mistake what this what this migration does um, and then if you want to run the migration file you can just do PHP artisan mi uh, migrate alright and then if you want to run tinker and you want to interact with the database PHP artisan tinker will do that alright so eloquent is another really great feature that Laravel uses it's an ORM or an object relational mapper that uses active record and it makes working with models and working with the database very very easy okay and if for some reason you didn't want to use eloquent you don't have to you can just use the standard uh, DB library and you can just create raw SQL queries but this is an example of how we can bring in a model and save a, a resource in this case it's a to do so use app to do is going to bring the model in then we just create a variable and we can set it to a new to do then we can add fields in this case we're adding a title of some to do and then we can just call a save function okay so this will do all of the insert for us we don't have to write insert into and, and all that stuff okay so it's very uh, eloquent all right so as I said earlier Laravel also uses the blade template engine which in my opinion is one of the easiest to use all right it's very very simple it's also very powerful we can use control structures like uh, if statements conditionals loops and so on we can use PHP tags within the template um, we can, uh, template inheritance is also really easy we can create views and then we can extend layouts um, what I mean by that is we'll have our main layout with the HTML and head and body tags and all that and then we can just extend the view from that we can also create custom components uh, which we're not going to get into in this in this series so here's an example of a layout in blade so you can see we have HTML tags head tags body all that everything that you want on every single page and then we can put uh, a title we can put a dynamic title in here we can add sections in this case there's a sidebar section and then we have the main content or the main view that's going to yield right here uh, in this yield content so this is an example of a view that would extend that layout so all we have to do is say extends and then put in the file name um, we can add this section for in this case it's the title then we add the sidebar section um, we can bring in the parent which is uh, the main layout sidebar and then we can add to it if we want so that this will only be displayed on this view all right and then we have the main content here all right so that's going to be it for the presentation now we're going to jump in and take a look at the application that we'll be building all right guys so this is the application we'll be building now we're going to have two main sections one is going to be the pages section we're going to have a pages controller and that's going to take care of things like the index page which you're looking at now uh, the about page the services page and so on so that's what we'll start with and that's that's much simpler than getting into um, you know the crud functionality so once we do that we're going to get into the blog 
okay so we're going to create a post controller and we're going to be able to create read update and delete posts okay so this is the index page which will list the posts out if we click on one that'll take us to uh, you know that individual post and then once we get the crud functionality working we're going to then move on to to authentication all right so we're going to be able to register let's go ahead and actually I already have an account with my name let's let's say Steve Smith and the email address will just say test at test.com and then the password I think that's right all right so now that that went ahead and registered us and then it logs you in and you can see up here we have Steve Smith okay now notice that there's no blog post on our dashboard that's because only the posts that we create are going to show up on the dashboard so if we go ahead and create a post let's say blog post four, and we'll just put something in here I don't know we'll just say this is my blog post and we can upload an image which I don't think I have any uh, where are they I think they were in here actually yeah Laravel images so I'm gonna upload this keystone image here these are just screenshots from some of my videos so we'll grab that we'll submit and now you can see we get a flash message up here post created there's our post right there you can say it's written it gives us the date gives us the user okay we're gonna create a relationship between the users and the posts Okay, now if we click on that, notice now we have the edit and delete because we created this post so we can edit and delete it. And if we go over here, we can go to the dashboard and that'll show all the posts we created. Okay, so we can easily edit it. We can easily delete it. Okay, uh, it gives us a little uh, confirmation. We'll say okay. And now the post is deleted. Now, although it looks very simple on the surface, there's a lot we're going to get into. We're going to cover all the fundamentals of Laravel. So hopefully you guys really enjoy this series and I will see you in the next video.